Hello everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're going to be showing you how to replace an exhaust manifold gasket in a 4.6 liter Ford Modular V8. This applies to Crown Vicks, Explorers, Mustangs, and the F-150. Basically anywhere a 4.6 liter V8 was used by Ford, this video applies to it and um, it might look a little bit different those applications. If you're curious, this was in a 2010 um, Crown Vic, um, but all those other applications are just to the same. They might look a teeny bit different, but all the stuff that's really important is exactly the same. It's a fairly simple and straightforward repair that anybody could do in their garage with a little bit of time and be very careful when removing those exhaust studs. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first step we're gonna work on is grabbing some WD-40 and hitting every stud we can see. It just looks like this. But there's a couple of them, so you gotta reach way back there on the bottom and the top. This will help us get those uh, pesky nuts out in a little while. And keeping in our WD-40 theme here, we need to uh, hit these head pipe flange nuts. Again, this is gonna help us get these off. And then we can also do the rear as well. All right, so now we can take out these bolts holding this rear exhaust flange together. It is a 14 millimeter. I'm gonna be using my impact gun. If you don't have an impact gun, a uh, breaker bar or a long ratchet, you just want that power in. There we go. There's one. Right. Uh, this one's kind of tricky. Had to use a swivel socket and a breaker bar to uh, get it out. Long extension is really the key here for this one. And there we go. So next thing we need to do is unplug our O2 sensors. This is the connector and it's really easy to find. You just follow the wire from the O2 sensor to wherever it is. And that one's right there. So you gotta push down on the safety and then wiggle it apart. That was pretty easy actually. Okay, and we have the same connector uh, up here for the top O2 sensor. Uh, and it's exactly the same. You just need to depress the safety and uh, pull on it. Just like that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is grab our 15 millimeter deep well uh, with a U-joint swivel on it and remove these header bolt flange nuts. There we go. And then before we remove the next nut, make sure you're having something hold uh, the cap pipe because it'll just fall down on you. And there we go. So here we can look down into the catalytic converter and as you can see, there is plenty of catalytic converter material there, those little honeycombs. That's actually what does all the cleaning for you. Now if it's melted or there's big chunks missing or it doesn't look like this, then the catalytic converter is no good and needs a replacement. All right, so the next thing we need to do is remove this fresh air pipe, but the first thing we're gonna do is hit it with some WD-40. And let it sit for a little while. Okay, so we have an inch and a sixteenth wrench on the top fitting of this air hose here and it's important to note it does have a secondary fitting that actually goes into the exhaust manifold and if that starts spinning together you're going to need to grab an air hammer and uh, hit the opposite sides of the left side here so it'll spin into the manifold while you are trying to loosen the top here they can be uh, a little tricky and a little stuck and completely terrible so so now it's pretty loose i can actually take it off by spin it by hand here and it's off. All right, the next thing we need to do is remove this pinch bolt right here, and it's kind of not in an opportune position. So what we can do is grab the tire and gently rotate it until it's in a more workable position like that one. So we're gonna grab our 10 millimeter socket here with a nice extension. And there we go. So this fitting we're taking apart has a flat spot on it. It's a, it's a spline fit, but there's a flat spot, so it only really goes on one way. You don't really need to mark it because it'll only go on the one way. We can grab a pry bar here. And uh, pry it off. There we go. All right, so now we can start taking off the nuts that hold the manifold to the head. Uh, now I'm going to be using an impact tool. Again, you could use a breaker bar, but they are going to need a deep well 13 
and it's just going to take a number of uh, swivels and extensions. So I'm going to show you how to do this one, and the other ones uh, are exactly the same. You just have to do uh, a couple little swivels and extensions. It's all very doable. And there you go. All right, so I've got my air ratchet here with that 13 millimeter deep well. We're going to try to get these uh, top manifold bolts off, or nuts off. Okay, so what's happened there is the stud has come out with it, which is totally fine. It actually saves us a little bit of work. With all the uh, nuts off, we can go ahead and remove the exhaust manifold here. You could probably get it out through the top, but I thought it'd be easier and more fun to do it from the bottom. And just like that. And finally, we can remove this gasket here. Comes in two pieces. So we have our uh, exhaust manifold here and our gaskets. As you can see, uh, this side, because it's cleaner and not burned, is nice and bright. That means it was sealing over here on this side. But over here where the broken stud was, where my pointer finger is, you can see that it is darkened. Some of these exhaust gases that were hot are pouring out of where they shouldn't be and extra oxygen is being scavenged in and confusing the emission system. We can also take our exhaust manifold here and turn it over and look very carefully for any signs of cracks on the iron because if there are any cracks, on any seams, look around the flanges, on all of the ports here, because if there's any cracks anywhere, it's not gonna work properly. So before we put it back together, we have to make sure that these surfaces right here on these ports are nice and clean. We're gonna grab our gasket gun and hit those up. These ports have to be clean, as well as the holes on the head. So we're gonna show you how to do uh, this right here on the exhaust manifold, but the same thing applies to the head inside the car. All right, with those poor surfaces nice and smooth, ready for our next gasket material. We're gonna be using a Kemetic gasket. As you can see, it is one piece instead of a two piece. So that's a little bit of a different styling, but it is the correct product. I will link, leave a link down below in the description to it. All right, since you can't get a gasket gun up there, we're gonna just use a scraper and do it the old school way. Nothing wrong with that. We just wanna make sure there's no leftover gasket material on here. See that? It's already better. Um, so that way it makes a good seal with the new uh, gasket we're going to be putting in. All right, once we've knocked off most of the old gasket material, we're going to spray some carb spray on a rag here. And just make sure it's extra clean. And I'm only going to show you the one port because they're all the same. Make sure this is as clean as possible because if it's not, you're doing the whole job over again. And that's no fun. Okay, so we're taking the exhaust studs out because they have a tendency to break. And we have new ones, so we're going to put them in. We're using a five millimeter socket here to uh, back them out. Back again. There we go. I'm gonna take some carb spray here after we've scraped uh, the gasket material, carb spray on this rag, and we're gonna clean that away, all that gunk away that we can, including where the studs went into the heads. We just wanna make sure that's nice and clean before we install the new studs and manifold. So before we put the manifold back in or before we put any kind of new gasket material on, we're gonna take a little bit of some coarse sandpaper and go around uh, this flange here, just so there's not any heavy debris in the way when we try to bolt it back together. All right, so we have our new studs here and um, they're secured with a little bit of different mechanism. They're not using a, a socket, they use an Allen instead, Lord knows why. We're gonna wind these in by hand at first because we really wanna feel where they bottom out at. Here we go, so it is now finger tight, so we're pretty close to the maximum amount it's gonna go in. And if I find a torque spec, it'll be here on screen. But if you don't have a torque wrench, which is understandable, frankly, we're just gonna grab a normal ratchet here. And just do uh, medium tight. No, don't hulk it in here. That right there is perfect. All right, I'm gonna do this bottom one here. And make sure you do this part by hand because you really want to feel if it's being cross-threaded or not. And obviously, cross-threading, no good. There we go, same procedure for this bottom one. Just a, you know, a little medium tighter roux. 
and you're all good. So what we're gonna do is use some silicone rubber here, uh, the really good stuff, because it's gonna get really hot. So you want uh, high-end automotive exhaust quality silicone rubber. Uh, so we're gonna put a little dab of it on our middle finger here and go around the port here. Nice thin film. This is gonna help our gasket seal those exhaust gases in. And before you start the vehicle, make sure you have waited the entire curing time on your silicone rubber, and that information is available on the tube. All right, since we have a one-piece uh, gasket here, not the standard Ford Motor Company two-piece, we're gonna have to be a little clever with, uh, you know, orientating it onto the ports here. All right, we make sure that's nice and seated into its positioning, and you can always tell uh, how the gasket should go on via the port locations on the gasket, and uh, this closed top up here holds it in place, because if you put this up here, it's just going to fall off the top and cause you headaches. All right, so on the manifold here, we're going to take some silicone rubber on our finger again, and uh, rub it around the port here, and uh, it's important to note that you should be wearing gloves when you're doing this. You really don't want silicone rubber on your skin, because your skin is porous. Just smear that around. That's now it's ready to go back in the car. So now we can replace our manifold here. And then, while we're in this position, go ahead and replace at least one of these nuts. I'm going to try to do two here. All right, so uh, we're going to leave the manifold a little bit loose here. I haven't even put in all the nuts yet because we need this clean air tube to be reattached now. If you put all the bolts in and you have no play or leeway, this will be insanely difficult for you. So it's easier to do it this way. All right, so we're gonna tighten the manifold nuts now. Uh, you have to do it in a kind of a specific order. Uh, I have a great diagram on screen right now that shows you uh, what kind of order you should be doing. So, you know, you go in the middle, you start from the middle and then you go diagonally down across and then over and then up. Um, I'm going to do my best to show that, but um, here's a diagram anyway, like I said, that will show you basically what I'm doing. Okay, so we're going to torque these because everyone loves a good torque wrench, torque wrench, torque wrench, torque wrench. And we're going to be torquing this to the torque specification located on the screen now. And there you go, now we can go underneath. So now we're on the bottom of the car and we're at the diagonal of the one we just tightened. So we gotta do this one. And then the one after that's gonna be this one to its left. Um, just like the diagram says, so I'm gonna show doing this and then I'm gonna tighten the rest of them off camera, but it will be tightened as the diagram says. Make sure you do it like the diagram says as well. As if not, you'll get leaks. And there we go. Now that the exhaust manifold is tightened to the head, it's not going anywhere, and the air tube is connected, but not tight. We need to tighten that up with our inch and sixteenths, one sixteenths wrench. Actually, we can finger tighten it like that and then go for the wrench. There we go. All right, so now we can put the uh, steering shaft back on. We move that out of our way for convenience. So while I'm having fun trying to put this on, it's important to note to this is attached to your steering wheel, obviously, and your steering wheel has clock or clock spring, and uh, that controls like cruise control and uh, radio, some radio functions in some cars and the airbag. Uh, and if you spin it and you bolt it down and then somebody goes to turn the steering wheel, it'll rip and then you'll cause all kinds of problems. So don't spin it too much while you're trying to find your uh, flat spots here. There we go. Now we can replace our bolt here at our 10 millimeter with our uh, extension loaded up here. We can just tighten that bad boy up. There we go. All right, so this is the uh, rear flange for that cat pipe, but this is the exhaust side. 
and the gasket came off with the cap pipe. Uh, so we've cleaned it with some sandpaper, and now we got some silicone rubber on the end of my middle finger here. And we're just going to go around it to make sure that we get a new, a good seal when we replace the cap pipe. And here's the other part of that exhaust flange. We're going to silicone rubber this side as well. And if there's any gasket material left over from remo removing it, make sure you hit it with some sandpaper and try to make it as uh, flat as possible there. And we can grab our gasket and apply it like this. And the cool thing about silicone rubber is it's pretty sticky, so it's going to stay on there for us until we're ready to uh, place it into the car. All right, now we can replace that cap pipe. Now, you can hold it by the flange here. So what we're gonna do is uh, leave the nuts loose like this so we have a uh, opportunity to move the pipe around to make it a little easier to install the rear flange, uh, nuts and bolts. Okay, so you're looking at the uh, rear flange that the cat pipe att attaches to. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the bolts in now. Um, so the cat pipe flange has something to kind of aim at. Looks pretty good. All right, we're gonna grab our 14 millimeter and uh, tighten those bolts on up. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is plug in the uh, rear O2 sensor and it's kind of tight and dark up there so it's just this connector right here and it just pushes straight on only one way so it's, uh, it's right to the left of the transmission there. Do not forget to plug these O2 sensors back in and make sure you route the uh, core or the cable, you know, the wires away from the exhaust. Okay, so there's the forward O2 sensor. Uh, we can grab ours, our end of it, and plug it in up there. Again, it's going to be a little hard to show on film, but that's the sensor right there. It's right above the bell housing on the transmission, and they go together. They go back together really easily, they just push in. There we go. They make a really nice gratifying clicking noise when they're in, see? Alright, so we're going to grab our 15 millimeter deep well and finally tighten up these uh, catalytic converter flange bolts, or nuts. So you don't want to do all at once, you want to try to split it up. Because you don't want one side all the way on. Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up how to replace that exhaust gasket. It is um, not too bad, a little bit of work and stuff, but it, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg if you take it in. So you might as well do it for a lot cheaper in your garage or driveway. Uh, this is something you could totally do with a Jack or Jack stand. All applicable links are down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.